1979, 1.3 million elephants were on the African plains. By 1989, only 60,000 remained. Corruption, the desire of ivory, blood money, used to buy arms, all contribute to this alarming population decline. As a result, Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, also known as CITES, has begun exploring ways to save the elephant population. History has shown that elephants have been killed since the time of the pharaohs. In the early Middle Ages, the elephant population in North Africa had been exterminated. Ivory trade expanded in the 18th and 19th centuries. In the 1900s, the European demand for ivory resulted in the killing of more than 100,000 elephants for piano keys, billiard balls, and trinkets. In World War II, the availability of plastic substitutes caused the decline in the ivory trade. The elephant population declined 80% in the Central Africa Republic in 1981. What is being done to help the elephants? Born Free, an organization that helps endangered species, helped sites to ensure the first international ivory ban in 1989. Both organizations investigate illegal ivory smuggling and also they help relocate elephants that are at risk on African reservations. They support anti-poaching in Kenya, Tanzania, and Ethiopia. Born Free and its supporters helped encourage sites to ban international commercial ivory trade worldwide. As a result, the price of ivory crashed and the markets in Europe and the United States closed. Why elephant populations are still declining. Animal reserve employees are usually corrupt. Urban areas block migration routes for the elephants to move in and out of safe zones. Poachers are usually poor, so the price of ivory drives them to kill elephants. In China, the demands for ivory drove the price of a tusk to be over $2,000. Chinese people also did not understand that the elephant had to be killed for their tusk. They couldn't, leave, they couldn't just cut the tusk off. The whole animal had to be killed. An offense for elephant tusks also go without prosecution. For example, in Kenya in 1986, authorities had evidence for 176 cases, but less than 5% were charged. Journeymen TV has captured poaching of whole elephant families. Uh, these two older females were the first two that were shot, uh, that one and, and this one here. And there's a young one that was shot who was wounded who ran into the thickets and is further down in the back. Pratik now runs photographic safaris in Tanzania to showcase its wildlife. But never more common sight is dead elephants sometimes entire families killed by automatic gunfire. And the other one is just uh, 10, meters away. 10 meters away. There's still four. So this is one family. They're just moving slowly. They shot. To be honest, they didn't even have any, anything substantial ivory on them. You know, hardly 10 kilos of ivory, you know, each. Um, so there wasn't a lot there.
In just the past three years, Tanzania has lost 40% of its elephants. Most of the tusks have ended up in China. Ivory carvings, jewellery, even chopsticks are a status symbol for China's booming middle class. It's been illegal to harvest ivory for sale since 1989. But the surge in demand from China has made a mockery of the international ban. They're getting all the ivory from Africa, from the field. Why elephants are important. They are the gardeners, the engineers, and the architects of our ecosystem. They are gardeners because of their fruitless diet. That makes them great seed bearers. When they don't finish eating the whole fruit, what they leave behind will rot and the seeds will fall onto the ground. They are responsible for spreading seeds long distances. Some plant species depend on elephants eating them and spreading their seeds. They are also able to rejuvenate some habitats due to them constantly transporting many species of seeds. They are engineers because their dung provides a suitable germination environment in which seeds can grow. It is also rich in minerals and very fibrous. Provides an important source of food for animals such as the dung beetle with without elephant's poop would be extinct. It also helps keep animals safe from predators, elephants as water providers. The desert elephant in Africa will travel miles in search for water. They will remember underground watering holes and they will dig holes to make wells. The animals will follow elephants, especially in droughts, so they will be able to drink. People will also follow animals in search of water. Elephants are like engineers because they alter and modify habitats by pushing over trees, stripping bark from trees, and stomping around plants. For example, they can transform a woodland in Africa into an open savanna, creating grazing habitats for a dozen of land species. When they move on, the savanna grows into shrubs for a hosting of browsing animals, and then once more becomes woodland. Elephants also open up dense woodlands by creating forest gaps. When they open these dense woodlands, that allows species into the light gaps, thereby getting light down to the forest floor. First, not only do a lot of these elephants dig wells to get mineral-rich water, but they also leave behind a lot of footprints, which can fill with water. And this helps other small animals to access the same scarce resources. At the same time, these actions create microhabitats for lots of other creatures, like frogs, which can lay eggs in the water. And really, a single elephant footprint can eventually turn into a miniature world full of life. Of course, elephants must eat. They eat a lot. An elephant can eat just about any plant, even ones with thorns. It can strip the bark off a tree, which eventually might kill the tree. And at first this might sound really destructive and bad, but realize that a dead tree also makes a good home for other animals, like, say, birds that like to nest in the hollows. And because of their size and strength, elephants make short work of large fruits with shells that are difficult to crack. And other animals benefit from the fruits that drop on the ground as the elephants are foraging. And finally, the plants themselves benefit because, you see, elephants are gardeners. So here's the thing, without these elephants doing their thing in the environment, a lot of these other animals would not survive. Who are we to decide which animals should be in the ecosystem and which ones shouldn't? So take out the elephant and you lose just a lot of individual species, smaller species that depend on these elephants for the changes, more so than you might if you took out just hypothetically one small animal. And if we take a Not only are we losing one of the largest mammals on Earth, but we are also losing an important contributor to our ecosystem. I hope this documentary has inspired you to go out there and make a difference to stop this problem.